Good evening. Uh, my name is Larry Meisel. My brother Steve Meisel usually presents the Defender of Israel Award, but he's in Israel doing what he loves, supporting the brave soldiers of the IDF. So, so tonight, it is my honor to present the Defender of Israel Award. In times of deep darkness, there are people who help us see the light. Rabbi Leo D., a teacher and rabbi, a husband and father lost his wife and two of his daughters in a horrific way this past April. His remarkable ability to show love in the face of tragedy and his passion for unity and peace are truly inspiring. It is a privilege to honor Rabbi D and his family tonight. Rabbi D's unshakable faith, his love for Israel and for his fellow Jews is even more meaningful and inspiring for us in this present moment. Israel is at war with a barbaric and brutal enemy, a terrorist organization that murdered more than a thousand of our brothers and sisters in Israel, wounded thousands more and snatched innocent men, women and children from their homes to use as hostages. This is indeed a time of deep darkness. When Rabbi D could not be with us in person this evening, he prepared a video message for us, which I will share with you in a very soon. First, I want to give you a little background about Rabbi D and his family, about the tragedy that propelled him into the public spotlight and about the efforts Rabbi D is making to show us the light. Rabbi D and his wife Lucy are originally from England and were married for 25 years. They made Aliyah in 2010 in, to Efrat, which is just over the Green Line near Jerusalem. Their five children grew up in a home filled with love of family and community and of the land of Israel. Earlier this year, on April 7th, the D family were traveling in separate cars to Tiberias for vacation during the Passover holiday. On the way there, Rabbi D heard about a terror attack in Hamamra Junction, and his son saw pictures of the attack scene posted online that showed a familiar white car and a distinctive piece of luggage covered in blood. Rabbi D turned around and rushed back to the scene where he was informed that his daughters, Maya, 20, and Rena, 15, were dead, and their mother had been airlifted to the hospital. The mother, Lucy, died of her injuries three days later. The police later confirmed that two terrorists had shot some 20 bullets into the car, then shot the family members after the car crashed. Israel security forces identified and located the men involved in the shooting. They were killed in a security raid in Nablus on May 4th. <laughs> the murder of these three beautiful Israeli women shook Israel and the world. 
Hundreds of people came each day to the large tent set up for the Shiva outside the D family's home. Their neighbors in Ifrat and people from other towns and communities rallied to support the D family. World leaders and great rabbis came to the Shiva tent. Arab neighbors and friends came too. Remarkably, Rabbi D has been sharing messages of unity and love since Lucy, Maya, and Rena were killed. He has called for the Jewish people in Israel and around the world to come together to support each other, to see the good in each other, and to unify against the evil that the Palestinian leaders promote. And the insight and subsidence of what they've done. Out of the darkness of tragedy and of loss, Rabbi D shines a light. Please now turn your attention to the video that Rabbi D has recorded last month before the barbaric terrorist attack on Israel. Good evening, Ashibua Tov. And my apologies for not being able to be with you here tonight uh, in person. I'd like to thank the RGC and especially Steve Meisel and David Orlin for honoring us all with this award tonight. And I say us all because the true defenders of Israel were Lucy, Meyer, and Rena, who were brutally murdered in cold blood on April 7th, 2023 in the Jordan Valley while we were driving up to our Passover holiday in the Sea of Galilee. Lucy was my other half, or in fact, I was hers. She sparked my passion for Israel, as well as my passion for life. Lucy chose for us to live in a frat in the heart of the Judean hills, on the route that Abraham took with Isaac for the binding of Isaac, and not far from where Jacob buried his beloved Rachel. Lucy believed that defending Israel meant to build our home and our future here forever. Her last act was to donate her organs and to save five lives, including that of an Israeli Arab. Lucy was a true defender of Israel. Maya was 20 years old, volunteering for her national service in a growth town in the south of Israel. She was inspiring the next generation of high school girls in Jewish studies values, and Torah. Maya was a defender of Israel. Rena was 15 years old and popular with every girl in her boarding school. She was the one who'd put her arm around the girls who were lonely or sad, and she was the one who'd welcome a new face to the class. She was a true defender of Israel. But now the baton has passed from them to me. And one of my first challenges was encountering CNN. On three separate encounters, I and my family were equated with the terrorists, moral equivalents. Christine Amanpour's feeble apology for describing the brutal murder of my wife and daughters as a shootout, suggesting that my girls were firing at the terrorists, has not been accepted. For more about where this is going, watch this space. Five years ago, the Trump administration wisely canceled payments to the vehemently anti-Semitic UNRWA organization a United Nations front for funding terror training in Judea and Samaria. This funding has been resumed by the current administration, and the terrorists that killed my wife and daughters were trained with US taxpayers' money. This must stop. The Palestinian Authority continues to openly incentivize terrorism by paying the families of dead terrorists, such as those that murdered my wife and daughters, a million dollars for their services. Their $300 million annual budget for pay for slay is also funded by the international community, and this too must stop. The Middle East consists of Israel and over a dozen Arab countries. Israel is the only democratic country with human rights for all its citizens, including two million Arab Israelis. Our Arab neighbors are not free nor are they democratic. That means that over 100 million Muslim Arabs in our region have no freedom of expression, no freedom of religion, 
and no freedom to vote in their government. The only Arabs that do have these freedoms are our Arab Israeli citizens. The paradox of our free society is that everyone can complain publicly about the Israeli government, Jews and Arabs alike. And this is regularly reported on the international press. But nobody complains publicly about the plight of the 100 million Muslim Arabs who are really suffering in Arab terror regimes, including the 2 million Palestinian Arabs who are suffering under the terror state of the Palestinian Authority, because they would be killed if they did. So an anti-truth has been created where the one free and democratic country in the Middle East has been transformed into the evil Zionist regime, whilst the Arab terror states are perceived as being paradise. Fortunately, there is one man standing up against this hypocrisy and protecting the safety of every US and free world citizen against all attempts by your current president to arm Iran with nuclear missiles capable of destroying New York and California within one hour. And that's Bibi. He's not perfect, but he's the only world leader you can rely on to prevent this global existential threat. Thank you, Bibi. My life and that of my three remaining children has been changed beyond measure since the 7th of April. But we will all continue to be defenders of Israel. It's our home. And whilst I'm sad about the past, I'm hopeful about the future of this beautiful and vibrant land. There's always a limited amount of challenges we're asked to face in life, but there's an infinite amount of good that surrounds us every day. If we wake up in the morning, if we can breathe the sweet air and sip our coffee, we can savor every moment and thank God for our existence. And that's the paradox of tragedy. The greater one's loss, the more one can appreciate that every moment of life is precious. As the saying goes, the pessimist believes the world is at its worst possible, and the optimist agrees, because from here, there's only one direction. And so we go on, with joy and hope, but with the memories of a perfect life once lived. My kids and I call it episode two. No worse than episode one, but without three of the best characters, the three ultimate defenders of Israel, Lucy, Maya, and Rena. May their memory be a blessing to us all. Thank you once again for your ongoing support of Israel, for the only democratic country in the Middle East, your ally and your friend forever. And may we all go from strength to strength. Amen. Rabbi D. It is my honor to present this award on behalf of the Republican Jewish Coalition. We proudly present this Defender of Israel Award to Rabbi Leo D. in memory of Lucy, Maya, and Rina D. of blessed memory. In recognition of their lives filled with giving goodness and love for all Jews and all mankind. This award is funded by the Stephen M. Meisel Foundation, October 28, 2023. We stand with Rabbi D and with the people of Israel and with Israeli military forces who are fighting to protect them. May God grant them success and end the threat of terrorist violence against Israel and all the Jewish people very soon. Am Yisrael Chai.